So I was asked to do like a mini masterclass on the visa situations in Portugal. Um, I will try to give you a lot of information with super objective aspects and then we will be in the stands to clarify any questions you have. So first of all, uh, we are Prime Legal, we are a law firm in Portugal. Uh, we are based in Lisbon City Centre and we work mostly with individual clients for tax, residency, real estate uh, and immigration aspects. First of all, and uh, to clarify the main difference of the visa situations in Portugal. We have two main differences. In one side we have what we call D visas, which are residency visas. And we have another one that is a very special one that is called the golden visa. Main difference. Golden visa is for those who want to have a second residence card, those who want to have citizenship, but those who don't want to relocate permanently to Portugal. So, if you are considering to relocate to Portugal and spend at least six months a year there, you need to concentrate yourself on the D visas. If, on the other side, you want to have the opportunity to access citizenship after five years, but you don't want to live in Portugal, you just want to spend like seven days, one month, three months, you have to consider a golden visa because it's what gives you mobility for that. Main differences. Application process. The visas, as my colleagues previously mentioned, they are requested from here, from your residency country. So you apply your <coughs> consulate for a visa, it's processed within more or less 60 business days, and you get a visa in your passport. You arrive to Portugal, you will collect biometrics, and you will have your first residency card. My highlight, during this year, the first residency card, due to an exception in the law, will be valid for two years. After next year, from 2024, we will go back to the original deadlines and the first card will be valid just for one year and then renewed every two years. <laughs> Golden Visa is different. Golden Visa is something that you can do entirely from abroad without going to Portugal. So your advisor can do it, you don't need to go there, everything is done um, at the distance of a phone call, of an email, of a WhatsApp. Tannings of approval. Most important while relocating to Portugal. Manage your expectations. Our immigration office is a little bit chaotic at this moment. <laughs> no, doesn't matter. Everybody knows it's in the news, so I will not sugar the pill. Um, for reasons, I do recommend if you are willing to relocate to Portugal to consider it to organize your process at least six months from the date that you are willing to arrive to Portugal to live. Depends on the appointments in the consulate. Appointments are running out, they will run out even faster at this moment because of the NHR ending in the end of the year, so it's important to have that in mind. Golden visa on your side <laughs> is taking two years. Initially the process was taking three months to be approved, long time ago, due to the Covid, Ukrainian war, strikes in the immigration office, the process are being delayed and it's taking two years. Even so, it's not bad if you are looking for AP5 in US, you can take 10 years until you have citizenship. So we have to see things in, in perspective. <laughs> costs. There are also a big difference in what regards to costs. In the divisas, in terms of application fees, you have to consider it more or less paying to the immigration office to the state more or less 500 euros per person. Um, it's in the visa application, it's then in the residency card, it's what you have to consider it. On the opposite side, you have the fees for golden visa, that's why it's called golden visa, because you have to pay a significant amount of fees to apply for, around 70,000. They will just update to this value now around the 29th of October, they will update the fees. And why you are paying so much? Because basically you are paying to have the benefit of the freedom of the mobility. You don't need to live in Portugal and that's a perspective that the, the government has put in the Golden Visa also because it's associated to an investment in Portugal. However, both of them they give you family unification rights, meaning that you can apply by yourself but you can bring spouse, children, parents and parents-in-law with some differences here between the two situations. In the D visas, if you have adult children, 18 years old or more, they need to study in Portugal if you want to have them a Portuguese residency card. 
if you are doing the golden visa, in that case it's different. The children, even if they have 18 years old or more, they can study abroad, meaning that they can have the residency card, they can do the path to citizenship without also being in Portugal studying, they can study any, any place. As I started by mentioning, the big difference here between D visas and Golden Visa is the minimum presence in Portugal. The D visas, by general rule, they request six months per year. Of course, there are exceptions in the law. We do not suggest to play with the exceptions without being sure that you can then have proof to challenge any kind of um, refusal by the immigration office. So don't play with exceptions. Golden Visa, by his side, only requests seven days of presence in Portugal per year. That's why we say that it's the mobility that makes the difference. And finally, in terms of tax impact, from the moment that you relocate to Portugal, as we mentioned before, by spending there six months in a role of 100 or one year, you will be considered tax resident in Portugal. So usually, D visas, then D residency cards, they are associated with a tax of residency status to Portugal. However, if you are doing golden visa, you have no impact because you don't need to leave there. You just have the seven days as minimum. But don't mix. And if you want, even with the golden visa, you can live in Portugal as long as you wish. However, you have the minimum and the minimum is only the seven days, seven days per year. So in terms of the golden visa and starting by the, this program, the program just had huge exchanges now in uh, this month, in 8th of October. And basically, being associated with an investment in Portugal, the government, um, following the political of creating more habitation in Portugal, decided to reduce the options of investment that are associated. So, how this works? To be granted with the Golden Visa, you need to do a qualified investment in Portugal. Those kinds of investments, they can go from corporate, from labor, to financial investments. Usually, you also had the real estate option, but now it's not anymore eligible. Meaning that to, grant, to be granted with a golden visa, you need to do or a half a million investment in a venture capital fund, for instance, or divide it into different capital funds. You can either incorporate a company and create 10 jobs in Portugal, or you can invest in an already incorporated company and create five job positions. You have also activities, uh, the support of art or maintenance of the Portuguese uh, national heritage for 250, or um, invest in research activities in the scientific or technological field for half a million. These are the current options of investment. Main difference also for the divisas. On the divisas you apply because you are retired, you want to work in Portugal, you want to study, um, or you want to be a digital tournament, for instance, or you want to create a company. Those are the fundamentals of the divisas. On the Golden Visa, you need to end a qualified investment. And those investments, they are subject to pre-qualification, in some cases by the immigration office, in other cases by the minimum amount of investment that is associated. Stepping in the D visas. D visas are residency visas, so basically you apply because you have a, a purpose to come to Portugal, either to work, either to study, as I was mentioned. As uh, mentioned before, you apply from here, from your residency country. If you are here on vacation, you apply from the residency country where you are living, um, and basically, depending on the country, you can do it by the Portuguese consulate or by an entity that uh, replaces the Portuguese consulates on this matter, that is VFS. For instance, in the United States, most of the states now have this kind of companies where they will process your visa applications. <coughs> the analysis period is up to 60 days. Make sure that your application is completed with everything. Why? If not, you will be refused, you will receive a notification, you will have to add more information, and the process will be in the end of the pipeline. Um, after being granted with the visa, that will be valid for four months with two entries, meaning that during those four months you will come to Portugal when you want and you will have an appointment in the immigration office. There are some options where you can do everything from Portugal. We do not recommend just because of the lack of appointments. 
And if you can get the visa from the consulate, you will have an automatic date to visit the immigration office, and that date is precious. Don't lose it at all, because it's very, very hard to get appointments at this moment in the immigration office. Also, as I mentioned, during this year, due to a special uh, law, we do have residency cards that will be granted by two years, and then they are renewed every two years. At the fifth complete year, you can apply for citizenship or for a permanent residency card. From 2024, that exceptional law will end, so we will go back to the original deadlines and validities of cards, and will be one year card plus two plus two. Renewal highlights. As mentioned, the purpose of a residency visa is for you to live in Portugal. So if the purpose is to live in Portugal, the law defines that you should stay at least six months a year. Of course, you have exemptions, for instance, for professional reasons, for social reasons, for health reasons. But if you want to go on those exceptions, you need to make sure that you have the proof to justify those exceptions. And that in case you are going to renew and they ask you why you were not in Portugal for those six months, you have the enough proof to make the justification. <coughs> in terms of the specifics, we have the TT2, that is a permit for entrepreneurs. Those entrepreneurs, they can be freelancers, they can be um, applicants going to incorporate a company and a business in Portugal, and can also be a um, very special program we have, that is the startup visa, where up to five applicants, they can join and they can apply for this kind of visa, starting a, a small business and innovative business in Portugal. Details, here, most important is the business plan. Because if you are willing to apply for a D2, you need to prove what is the purpose of your activity, what is the plan you have to develop that activity in Portugal. So, business plan will be essential. We do recommend, in most particular cases, to incorporate a company. But, of course, it's not mandatory. <laughs> D3. D3 is focused on high qualified activities. So, professionals that are willing to move to Portugal to perform their activities there, where the main highlight will be academic qualifications, experience, the salary that they will earn in Portugal. This D3 needs to um, be coordinated with, of course, your employee there that will provide you the necessary um, labor contract or promise of labor, country, labor con uh, contract um, in order to make the proof of the performance of job that you will do in Portugal. Most important is to make um, the proof of your qualified activity. So that will be very relevant for purpose of being qualified under this institute and not under a standard D2, D1, that is a, a standard labor permit. Same situation, so you should stay in Portugal for at least six months a year and then renewed every two years. D7 is probably the one that you have heard the most is for owners of passive income. And what can be considered passive income? For instance, real estate rents, dividends, something that you earn without performing an active activity. So usually this is the, the visa that is most uh, adequate for retired people willing to move to Portugal. And what you have to prove here, you have to prove that you have enough means to support yourself and eventually the family member that you are taking with you in Portugal without resourcing to a local uh, job. Interesting, if you want, you can then apply for a local job and you can work in Portugal because all the, the permits, they give you access to work, to study, to health, to social care in Portugal. <laughs> and finally, the most recent one, it was um, added to our immigration law recently, that is the D8, is the Digital Nomad Visa for remote workers. Because a lot of people were willing to relocate to Portugal, not with the pure passive income, but still performing an activity for a foreigner entity. And due to that, the Portuguese government introduced the Digital Nomad Visa, where basically the main purpose here is to prove that you need, that you are really getting to Portugal, but you will keep to earn your income from abroad, from a different and foreign um, employer. <coughs> Difference also for the D D7. On the D7, the minimum amount of income is associated with our minimum labor salary, which will increase for around 800 euros per month. 
here in the digital economics is different and you need to consider it around 3,000 um, euros as income to make the application for the D8. After five years, if you have a golden visa, if you have a D3, a D2, a D7, the purpose and the process is the same. As soon as you complete five uh, years of a residency card, counting from the validity of your first residency card, you can apply for the permanent residency, if you speak a little bit of Portuguese, level A2, or you can apply for Portuguese citizenship also if you speak a little bit of Portuguese, level A2. Most important topic, if you don't speak Portuguese, you can continue to renew the D or the Golden Visa. Also important for citizenship. Imagine that you have a D and you apply for citizenship. Citizenship applications are taking more or less two years after you file your application, so you need to maintain a valid residency card. Renew it if you have to. Finally, up to these points we were speaking about immigration status, so civil residency. As my previous colleague mentioned, we then have tax residency, which is different. It's your qualification before our Portuguese tax authorities and the obligation of paying taxes in Portugal and making declarations of your income in Portugal. We have a special tax program that is called the NHR, which is very attractive because during 10 years they will give you like a general exemption of your foreign income and also a flat rate on your Portuguese produced income. News, it will end in the 31 of December this year. So it's very important for those ones who are willing to relocate to consider it because it will end. And in some cases, even if you have um, made the application, the law is foreseeing the possibility of you doing it after 31 of December. If you have, for instance, a visa already granted or you, have, you are in position to apply. So have this in mind in terms of main aspects. As a general rule, your personal income from labor will be exempted on 0%. Dividends, interest, royalties also. Public pensions also. Private pensions will be subject to a 10% rate. Capital gains on 0% if they are related to real estate. Uh, capital gains not related to real estate 28%, as well as United linked uh, insurances and other incomes coming from CCAPs or other funds. This until 31 of, uh, 31 of December this year, which will end, and from next year this will no longer apply. However, by doing the application within this year, you can still benefit from the 10 years of the special regime. To apply for the regime, basically, you need to have the proof that you are not tax resident in Portugal in the last five years, that you have a Portuguese address, and that you are willing or already relocating to Portugal. Basically, the NHR program is based on the double taxation agreement between Portugal and UK. So, in this case, you may have a tax break on your personal income, which is something to consider if you are willing to relocate to Portugal and have the most efficient situation. Thank you so much. You know it's a lot of information, but we will be there with time to explain in detail. Thank you.